Welcome to Scourge of the Undead. This will be the new iconic Azimar that's going to be featured in our upcoming third expansion, Ravenloft, in DDO. And uh, according to the dev notes, uh, this is going to be a Forgotten Realms based ranger that specializes in dual wielding bludgeoning weapons. So let's take a look at uh, what we have. So I'll first say that, you know, for those of you who are going, are planning on getting on Lamania but haven't yet, and when I first logged on, I, I had some trouble trying to get this iconic Azimar working. At first, it wanted to, like, charge me 1,295 points to create one, and then I, like, tried again, and then it was free. So I don't, the whole character creation process, I mean, the Lamania is the test server, so... You know, it's expected for things to be a little buggy. So if you are having trouble creating an Iconic Asimar, then just maybe exit out and try again before giving up. Uh, and hopefully that saves you a little bit of frustration. Because <laughs> I was about ready to just shut the whole thing down. Okay, I don't care about my points. I just really want to see what this thing looks like. Whatever. <laughs> uh, favorite enemy choices. I don't care. I don't care. All right, now to the good stuff. So I played with this just for a minute already, and what I noticed is, well, when I did my previous preview video about Azimar, I was a little bit critical of the skin tones, and it seems like they did some work on that. I haven't seen any dev notes that said they they made any changes but from what I can see it seems like the skin tones are are nicer looking and so I'm gonna try to show you what I mean they just seem more uh, more vibrant which is exactly what I was saying I, I was hoping for but you can get some really nice looking greens and blues uh, that just didn't seem to be there before and I remember this bar didn't really seem to do much of anything but you can get like some really dark skin going there um, yeah like what a difference between that all the way at the top of that bar to the bottom of the bar top of the bar to the bottom of the blue bar oh that's real dark doesn't even look blue anymore but I, I didn't know and I wonder if it's like this in the Dragonborn because the Dragonborn has these vertical color selectors too like this and even if you go from side to side within that vertical bar, you can get some different shades. So I'm going to have to try that next time I make Dragonborn to see if you can get different shades just going side to side. So I really like the skin tones now. Uh, let's see what kind of cool looking green we can make I like that. If I ever make an Azimar, you can bet it's going to be blue or green. Okay. So, we still don't have any lips. Lips does nothing, and facial detail does nothing. Now, I've seen pictures of people doing Azimar with, like, facial tattoos. So, that's coming, I guess, but I don't know why I can't get it. I don't. Nothing's jumping out at me that says facial tattoos. Maybe that's going to be face detail, and, and it's just not working. But I don't know why we're seeing, like, other... I'm seeing other people posting videos of it. So I don't know why it works for them and not for me. I'd like an answer to that. I don't have an answer for that. I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> but post a comment if you have any clue. Uh, another thing that doesn't seem to be doing anything is this metallic. Now, they I saw somewhere in the notes, it's evading me right now, but they said the metallic was working now, and it just doesn't seem to do anything. Now, every time I move it, the skin tone flashes as if it's trying to do something different, but I don't see anything. Now, I am getting a little older, and my eyes are starting to go, so maybe you're seeing something I don't, but <laughs> but I just am not seeing any difference. You know, according to this this uh, Technicolor spectrum here, it seems like there ought to be a, a massive difference when I go from one to the other, or at least a noticeable difference in some kind of like metallic-y sheen, but I'm seeing nothing. So, I guess that's still to be implemented or I need an eye exam. One of the two, uh, I think we can be sure of. 
Uh, nothing's different from last time, I think. You know, the hair, we don't have any Azimar hairstyles. I think it would be really cool to have something that was, like, new for Azimar to give them, you know, a, it's just a real fresh look. So I'm hoping for that. I think a lot of people are hoping for that. But, you know, there's nothing else different from what I've seen. The eyebrows are pretty boring. I, I love these pupilless, retinaless eyes. Okay. Uh, oh, we got to come up with a name. Schmazimar. All right, here I am in Evening Star, where it's much brighter. And check out that green. I think that's pretty nice looking. This is the outfit, or the cosmetic that you get with the starting gear. A couple of maces. One of them's actually kind of cool. Solar 3 Disruption for level 15. It's pretty cool. All right, uh, let's take a look at the enhancements. Let's see what we've got. There's some differences between the iconic tree and the regular tree. I haven't studied the differences, so I'm just going to go over everything here. So we got plus one use of lay on hands. Then we got this the uh, strength, charisma, or wisdom modifier. N another lay on hands. In addition, Bond of the Scourge now grants you Ghost Touch on all weapon attacks. Pretty cool. Another multi-selector. You gain proficiency with clubs, light maces, heavy maces, and morning stars. If you are good, any of these weapons you wield are considered good. 5% double strike. If you have the two weapon fighting feet, this grants oversized two weapon fighting feet. Up to plus three heal, listen, and spot. Up to plus three fortitude saves. Uh, this is the same as the regular. Overcome fear quickly. And then we got the improved reco recovery line is the same as the regular. As of Mar. So this, I think, is different because I thought the other one was, was charisma. In any, in any event, up to plus three constitution while your Divine Purpose or Ascendant Bond are active. So divine Purpose Scourge. You gain the Furious Aura of the Scourge of the, of the Undead. For one minute, your weapon attacks deal 3d6 extra light damage. That scales with melee power. Unvorable enemies are blinded. You must have Bond of the Scourge active in order to use this skill. May use this once per rest. An extra time for every divine charge you get. Arcanum, that's the same as the uh, regular Asimar tree, so you get up to 100 spell points and up to plus 3 spell penetration. Great for casters. While dual wielding clubs, light maces, heavy maces, or morning stars, you gain 5% chance to make offhand attacks and 5% chance to double strike with your offhand. And at the top we have clubs, light maces, heavy maces, and morning stars. You wield gain plus one sacred bonus to critical multiplier. Strike down. Plus three weapon melee attack and plus three critical threat range. Single target, 15 second cooldown. On hit deals 1d4 plus 4 per character level. Scales with 100% melee power in positive damage to undead creatures. Extra Divine Charges, uh, plus 30 Positive Spell Power, and then Ascendant Bond Scourge. Form, cost 30 Spell Points to enable. All bonuses from this skill are removed if you, this or your Bond feet are toggled off. When the stance is enabled, you get plus 1 to hit and damage. 1% double shot and 1% double strike. 
After 20 seconds of stance being active, these bonuses double. After 40 seconds, you also gain 10% action boost bonus to attack speed, 10% action boost to melee power, 5% action boost to ranged power, but you take your character level and light damage every second until the stance is toggled off. Huh. I wonder if you can just wear a, like a I don't even know if there's light resistance that can be crafted. After 60 seconds of the stance being active, all your bonuses from the stance double once more, but you take one stack of vulnerable every second. Come on. After 70 seconds, you know, these these stances where you're just, you know, taking damage or, you know, losing spell points the longer they're active. Just... I mean, I'm not going to use this anyways, because it's like a melee thing, but this, like, the caster one from, was it Angel of Vengeance, or, uh, oh, the Destiny. No, I can't remember. Divine Crusader, or whatever. Ain't, I don't know. Whatever. It just makes me want nothing to do with that crap. After 70 seconds of this of this stance being active, your movement speed will drop dramatically. <laughs> After 75, per second, 75 seconds of this stance being active, you can no longer contain the radiance within, and it will consume you. Y you die? Really? You know, I was about to make a joke that after it's on too long, you die, but apparently it's not a joke. Okay, we gotta find out what happens. You must have the bond of the scourge active to use its ascendant bond. This is not compatible with other major forms, toggles such as wild shape or celestial spirit. Let's hit accept. So we'll activate. You not meet the requirements. Oops. Okay. There's me activating my stance. Wow, look at those eyes. Reminds me of uh, the movie Ink, which if you haven't seen, check it out if you like independent films. It's a good movie. Low budget, but well done considering. Okay, so Divine Purpose Scourge. Is this the thing that's going to kill me? Scourge 2. Well, there I start taking some damage. No big deal. It's not the end of the world. irritating, but you know. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna die. Uh, anyways. Alright, I'm trying again. I've just got to the point where I'm starting to take light damage. I'm gonna see if I can <laughs> See if I can overcome it. Keep the renewal going. There's tier four. Yeah, 
And yeah, you just die. Boom. You leave it on too long, you're dead. That's not fun. I'm not even a melee. I'm not even going to use this. And I feel bad for y'all now, because to me, that's a giant disincentive to use that. That if I forget and leave it on a little too long, I die. That is just utterly absurd. But, uh, whatever. So what else can we say before we conclude this video? Past lives. So they've announced what the past lives are going to be. Let's take a look. So for the regular Azimar race... Not the iconic, the regular one. And so your your three racial past lives, which are all different. The first tier is going to be plus one to the heal skill. The second tier is going to be plus one to wisdom, which I think we all assumed that's what it was going to be. The third tier is going to be, of course, one racial action point, which is what all the tier three racials are. And then for the iconic, the passive past life feat, which is the always on is going to be plus one to your fortitude save. Of course, we can assume that that's will be a stacking bonus per uh, per stack and up to three. So up to plus three from fortitude save. That's pretty nice. That's meaningful to everybody. It's pretty cool. So will I go for that? Probably. Uh, and then the active, the toggleable stance. So you can only have one iconic past life stance active at a time. So the, uh, the active one for Iconic Azimar is plus 1% double strike and plus 2% offhand double strike per time this feat has been acquired up to 3. So you get plus t up to plus 3 double strike and up to plus 6 offhand double strike by getting by triple stacking this. So obviously melees out there are going to really want this one. That's pretty cool. So uh, well I think that's all I'm going to do for this little video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube.